Uh, for those people that, that don't know me or can't remember who the hell I am, I'm still GMD. And yes, this is Rock Shots back on the road again uh, for the simple fact that uh, Rock Media UK, big shout out to Helen, has given me the opportunity to get this thing resurrected after three years. And needless to say, the first thing she lined up for me is one of the best young bands I've been watching out of California for the last uh, four years. Please welcome Mark. Oh, yeah. Yes. From Dirty Honey. How you doing, mate? I'm hanging in there. Okay, well, uh, let's go back to the beginning. 2017, when the band first started. Mm -hmm. uh, who moved to California? I mean, we'd all been in California for a few years by then, but uh, me, John, Corey all moved to California by way of various places in the United States. Uh, that would explain a bit of the influence then that you guys have got. Um, Turn right towards our end of the bit. It's not Ozzy as on the sat nav, is it? Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, that would explain a lot of the influences. How far Midwest are, you, uh, are some of these guys? Uh, I am. I'm from New York. John's from uh, Massachusetts and Maine, sort of. And Corey's from Oregon, so he's on the West Coast. So one West Coast. Uh, so two West Coast and two East Coast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That is a bit, a bit of a mix. Uh, now. There, you guys, when you started, okay, there was 2017 the initial meeting, 2018 you get your first single out. Yeah. And then uh, from one moment to the next, you guys are on the road. Yeah. That's it. Uh, from what I have seen of you guys' schedule pre COVID, you guys are workhorses. Fuck, man, we still are. Um, I mean, this, this like tour that we're on right now in the UK and Europe is kind of. Uh, Indicative of that as well. It's like a lot of three, four in rows. Yeah. No real days off, you know, without traveling like 12, 14 hours. So we're, we're kind of doing the same thing. So. But but, not, but over the years, uh, I mean, because of the, your sound, the way it is, on one side, uh, someone called you guys a throwback band, mm -hmm. uh, a retro band, retro rock band. Uh, and I listen to it and I'm thinking, yeah, there are things like Aerosmith influences in there. There's things like uh, Guns N' Roses influences in there. Sure. But there's a lot of country in there. There's a lot of blues in there. There's a lot of uh, technical bits that you guys do that you can't say came out of the past. I think that's something you guys have mixed up really well on. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, all those things you said are totally true. And there's influences of like funk and R&B and soul and you know, I love James Brown and Alex Redding and things like that. And John is a super, super funk head, and Corey's a jazz head. So there's like, you know, those things peek their head out. I mean, one of the things I, I mean, I will listen to, I will listen to the album again today, just to nothing like I haven't listened to it for a million, a million times already. <laughs> um, and it, I listen to the opening track, California, and I think to myself, wait a second, and then it, it dawned on me. Trying to say what category could I put you guys anywhere near? And the, the one that came back to me was Tesla. Never listened to them, ever. Never. Never. And not to say I don't like them, I think. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about I only know science and see what's on. And that's like years uh, 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 Exactly. I think you can go back and listen to it. I mean, Frank Hannon is an amazing guitarist anyway. But I think the sound of the feeling uh, it, it's, it's like if I had to say, okay, throwback, bringing something else back out. I wouldn't call you the Tesla, but sure. you're in that genre of uh, enjoyable, well written songs that people are going to remember. Sure, man. That's right. And that's ideally where you want to be, um, obviously. I mean, when you guys uh, were writing this album, uh, was it a, a thought process that said we are going to throw as many songs out there as possible and then take the choice or did you just no. hone in on what you do? That's never the style of, of our like writing process. Usually only a few things get to the ultimate like, finish line and those are things like California Dream and what I'm calling the concepts that we're passionate about. If, if everybody's not all in on a tune, it usually doesn't make it all the way. Yeah. Um, so we're definitely not one of those bands that writes like 50 songs and gets eight or 10 or whatever. You know, whatever gets done, it got done for a reason. And it's so. Who's the perfectionist for the band then? Corey for sure. Um, myself too, but I think I'm definitely like keenly aware of like keeping the raw authenticity yeah. there as well. Like there's a perfectly imperfect balance in me to have. But yeah, Corey had his drummer, so he still be in the studio with the other record himself. <laughs> but it's nice to have that level of concentration in there. Because if you 
I, I mean, it's, it's good and bad. There, there's a certain um, authenticity to Rolling Sevens, for instance, is one thing. Everybody's one thing. Except for the guitar So, like, here's here. Like, came out great. You know, it's alive and energetic. Um, there's a reason for that. But. Well, if it, 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 it may have something to do with the fact that when I was watching the videos uh, and then the COVID hit, uh, and you guys did micro mm -hmm. yes, I, I was one of those that was, was sitting over here watching that. Oh, nice. uh, and that's probably why you're able to, uh, I mean, I looked at it and watched you guys live and said, I cannot wait to see you in front of an audience. Because you, everybody was giving at least 110% in it to an empty room. Yeah, yeah. But that is, is, is that the passion that's there all the time that you guys? Yeah, I would say maybe not during like sound check, but um, you know, whether it's a camera rolling or there's fans in front of us or we're just like in the room together, I think so long as the music is of high quality, I think everybody's, you know, getting on with the music more than anything. Uh yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, vocally though, how many how many octaves did you get down? I don't even know. I I, I I know you can do at least two. Uh, and I'm just wondering whether there's a third one in there because there are times when some of those notes, especially on the vowels. Yeah. Four or five, maybe? Yeah. yeah. So I have no idea. I've never even thought about testing that. I don't know. Yeah. Now, one of the lineups that uh, I absolutely fell in love with, which I think needs to be brought over here, was is the Red Sun, uh, Jim, and you guys all together. Well, I think Red Sun's done, so yeah. that that was probably say, won't happen anytime soon. You know, but Goodbye June and you guys, I mean, yeah. good God. I mean, those two albums, uh, I was just playing back and forth, back and yeah, forth. Yeah, third one, fun group, too. We just ran into the Red Sun guys at uh, Welcome to Rockville, too. The, they're in a new project now, but um, sweet guys. And credit them for the first ones to take us out. Other than Slash, of course, but first, like, real long tour, so. But then again, you guys are kind of like played on bills of kind of like the who's who of the last 20 years of rock, haven't you? Yep. Uh, now, is that, is that down to your management, having the connection inside of, the, uh, inside of the, uh, that camp, or is it just the simple fact that you guys are proving yourself so well, people are going, I want an opening act, give me these guys. Um, I think it's a mix of both. That was definitely like, you know, I think you have to have people, you know, in your business circle or whatever that can present opportunities and like, you know, get you, get your foot in the door or whatever, but ultimately it's up to the artists, you know, whoever show it is, whether it's Slash or Guns or The Who or uh, Red Sun, like to say, yeah, we're, we're approving this band to come, because at the end of the day, it's a indication that like, the support the support act is being supported by you know the main yeah. the main bell on the ticket you know it's a it's like a vote of confidence so um at the end of the day it's their decision you know certainly you know axel rose could have said no to us a million times if he wanted to but um he didn't and obviously we're grateful to him and slash and duff and everybody you know in their camp that's uh had us out but um it's kind of a little mix of both. Yeah. Now, first jump back right into the UK. Mm -hmm. How many shows have you done now? This is going to be four or five, I think. Yeah. How do you find it in the UK as a as, place, a, yeah, as an audience? I mean, the audiences are great. Um, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. Some of the best in Europe that we've experienced so far. Yeah. Because I, uh, as I was telling Stu earlier, uh, this venue holds a little bit of a a spark to me because when Rival Sons first came out, did the first two over here, they were uh, opening up for uh, Blackstone Cherry, mm -hmm. and down at the bottom of the stage stairs of, of the of the main stage, as you go around down into the parking lot down there, Scott was looking for a cigarette at the same time that I was, and that's why I pulled my very first interview with Rival Sons was down there in the steps of this building. Nice. So uh, at that time, it was uh, Blackstone Cherry that brought Rival Sons in because they felt. Yeah, yeah. There was a, the record label was involved, of course, sure, the sure. rest of it. But I look at now, ten years down the road, and I was starting to have you guys along for the ride into the UK. Yeah, it's awesome. Like we, you know, 
a long time ago we were looking at them as like another LA band that was you know over here doing mm -hmm. some big things. Long Beach, and, Long Beach. Yeah, of course. You know, so we, um, you know, obviously looked up to them, and it's it's kind of a full circle thing for us to be coming here for the first time with them because you know we were definitely watching them from afar. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, I was playing them back in 2007 when they first because uh, uh, remember MySpace. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> was that a little bit after your time? That was after my time. Yeah. <laughs> back, back back in those days, uh, because uh, I did a, I was doing a Southern Rock uh, Blue show, uh, and I ha had done the uh, Shooter Jennings uh, put the uh, uh, back in rodeo mm -hmm. and then, uh, the electric album. So I sent Dave Cobb an email going, "Are you doing anything else that I sh maybe should be aware of?" And he went, "Yeah, I just uh, did some demos for these guys out of Long Beach, California. Maybe you should listen to them." And that was my first introduction to our yes. sons. Yeah. So I, I love how uh, the industry is still able to pass it on. You know, the, sure. the, they'll push, play forward type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so how fun are our rival sons on tour? How fun are they? They're yeah. actually a really good time. Miley's like. I was going to say, is Mikey, like, is Mikey still crazy? Yeah, he's. Well, I don't know how crazy he <laughs> is, but, uh, you know, he's definitely very friendly. Every, oh, everybody's awesome. The whole crew is awesome. The band's great. And, uh, you know, again, more than anything, I can't stress enough. Like, they're a great rock and roll band. And, yeah. Like, I genuinely like watching them every night. So, um, I think Jay's a fucking awesome vocalist. And everybody in the band's great at what they do, but it's just great to see a, a band that you like, you know. Um, every night and like the last time that happened was I mean watching Guns N' Roses every night is great I've been pretty fortunate to be on you know tour with some of my favorite bands whether it's the Black Crows or the Sons or yeah. Guns you know like it's, it's everything so well done uh, so plans for the next album none yet none yet so everybody sit out and enjoy Dirty Honey first album yeah for another couple of years <laughs> yeah really. well maybe one so no worries. Anything you want to say to your fans out there? Oh, I'm just talking to you today and uh... Your fans the best man in the world! <laughs> the best man in the world? Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I don't know. Um, yeah, no, we're, we're just excited to be around yeah. and doing it again and having a good time, so... Yeah, all right, well, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I'm still Gino D. That's Mark from Dirty Honey. We'll see you guys later on down the road. Thank you.